without further ado, let's make a start. Um, so the aims for this session, uh, we're going to be focusing on how you can understand agree, disagree questions to make sure that you fully understand the question uh, so that you can get a high score for task response, uh, one of the four marking criteria for IELTS. We are going to look at planning your essay as well to make sure that you logically organize your ideas, that you can use a structure to organize them. Uh, this will help to give your essay coherence, which is uh, another uh, in coherence and cohesion. It's the second grading criteria uh, for writing. We're also going to look at using different linking expressions to develop your argument. So connecting your ideas, giving reasons for your ideas, giving examples. Again, this will help to give you a high score for task response and also for coherence and cohesion, uh, two very important categories. We will look at uh, how to offer an opposing view and a counter argument. Uh, this is very useful for agree disagree because it lets you give your opinion, but it also lets you show that you've considered an opposite point of view. And this can make your essay more academic and more stronger. Uh, exactly, Alexis, it's a type of concession. So uh, we'll look at the language that you can use and where in the essay uh, is suitable to, to make a concession. Um, we're also, the, the topic of this, this essay is about the environment, um, what we can do as individuals and as society to protect the environment. So there's going to be a lot of topic related vocabulary in there as well. Um, so that's the plan for the session. I think we can jump right in to understanding the question. So here is our question for uh, today's session. The first step, of course, is to read the question carefully. So let's read it together. So it says, individuals can do nothing to improve the environment. Only governments and large companies can make a difference. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Okay, so so I can see some of you, Koi, you're putting in your opinion already. You're saying you disagree with that. That's excellent. Um, oh, uh, I can see someone there is agreeing. So, yeah, but mostly we're disagreeing here. All right, good. Now, the good thing about IELTS is you, your answer, whether you agree or disagree, there is no correct answer, okay? It's about your opinion and how well you can justify your opinion. Um, so, uh, whichever one you choose is fine, as long as you can back it up with reasons and examples. Um, before we start writing, it's really important to plan carefully and to, to spend a bit of time analyzing the question. Usually there are two parts in each question. There's a statement or an opinion. In this case, the statement is individuals can do nothing to improve the environment. Only governments and large companies can make a difference. Uh, then we have a question related to that statement or opinion. In this case, to what extent do we agree or disagree? So we've got the two different parts. Another useful step then is to underline the key words to, to make sure that we're understanding the question fully. Okay, often students zoom in on one part of the question and they spend the whole essay writing about that specific part of the question. But actually the question is has another focus or has you know a wider focus. So um in this case, we need to make sure that we're really understanding the whole question and that we're answering all the question, both parts of the question. Um, Theo, we're not going to go into much detail about semicolons and colons um, in this session. If you want to add it as a Q&A, I can briefly try and explain it at the end, but 
it might take a while to, to cover that in detail. There's a lot of useful websites. Uh, if you Google uh, how to use this punctuation, you should find some information there. Okay, so uh, looking at the key words, uh, which words should we underline here? I can see Mohammed, you've suggested uh, some very good ones here. Obviously individuals is gonna be our first one. Okay. As you underline, think about other ways you could express these ideas, any synonyms. Uh, what does individuals mean? You know, it, in a way, we could say it means uh, people, Alexis, exactly. Uh, we could say people, we could say citizens, maybe, right? People in a country, uh, the masses, the public. Okay, very good. Um, other key words here. Very good, Alexis. City dwellers, yep, civilians, fantastic. The population, good. Yeah, do nothing, excellent. Nothing to improve the environment. Okay, um, we've also got improve the environment. Can you think of another way to say improve the environment? What does, what does this mean? protect, upgrade the environment, conserve the environment, very good, maybe develop. I think in this case, it's more about environmental protection, exactly. So this could be reducing pollution, this could be protecting animals, uh, this could be you know, protecting the oceans, reducing air pollution. It's good just to think as you read, what what does it mean? What, it, what is meant by this? Uh, yeah, maybe preserving the rainforest, exactly. Okay. Um, the second part, only governments and large companies. Um, and here we have make a difference. So here we can understand the question. It's saying, Individuals cannot do anything to protect the environment. Only governments and large companies can protect the environment. And we need to say, do we agree or disagree? Okay. Um, so by now, you should have some ideas. And I can see some in the chat. So Attila, you're saying the government relies on people. So this is one of your points, right? Which I believe is... Uh, a way to disagree with this. So I can see lots of ideas in the chat here. What we need to do first of all is to get an overall response to our question. Um, we can say, do we broadly agree or broadly disagree? And if so, why? So here we're gonna say, I agree because, or, I disagree because, and this is something you can do, you know, when you first read the question, think of some reasons why you might agree and think of some reasons why you might disagree, right? Then you can choose the, the side that you think is strongest, right? That will be your main point. So first of all, can we think of some reasons why you might agree with this. Uh, individuals can, they can't do anything. Uh, Sailor, that's a good question. I'll get to that in a moment, okay? About the middle, uh, the middle way. Okay, so I'm seeing lots of disagree. <clears throat> Very good, Nina. A person has too little influence, right? One person cannot really do very much, right? Very good. And governments and bigger companies are more influential. Uh, Zhe Yang, exactly. So, in fact, those are the two reasons that, that I thought of earlier. My first one <clears throat> was that a single person is responsible for only a tiny amount of pollution, right? It's, uh, this is one reason to agree. Another reason 
is that governments and companies can quickly make huge changes. They're very powerful. Um, they can change social policy. They can control, you know, a huge uh, amount of factories and infrastructure. So yeah, that's that's two reasons to agree. Okay. You've also said, Ranjan, policies are not in, uh, influenced by individuals. This is great. Okay. So, um, so these are two reasons to agree. Uh, can we think of two reasons to disagree with this? Ah, oh, very good. Naina, change starts with yourself. It's true. That's excellent. Uh, protecting the environment begins in an individual scale. Yep, I'd agree. Um, yes, Shiv, later on, we'll provide some examples to support our main points. And it's good to, to start thinking of these early on as well in your plan. Uh, we have a moral obligation. Fantastic, Ronak. Um, yep. Uh, every individual has to act. Okay. <clears throat> Fantastic. So I think a lot of us do disagree with this statement. And I've uh, said some of the same reasons. Uh, I've, as you've just mentioned, Mohammed. many people acting together can have a big impact. Okay. Uh, that's uh, one, one reason to disagree. Another reason is that individual actions can influence governments and corporations. So, you know, through social campaigns, through demonstrations, by voting, by purchasing certain products, as individuals, we can influence governments and companies who can then make these big changes. But without our pressure, uh, there won't be any change. So as we've said, we've got two sides here, right? There are reasons for and against. And often, you know, IELTS topics are on quite complex issues. There typically isn't like, a, I completely agree with this or I completely disagree. Usually the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? So you might be tempted, uh, as others have mentioned in the chat, to say, well, I partially agree and I partially disagree. Yeah, it's in uh, the middle way. Now, that's fine, right? It's, it's completely acceptable. And if you have the linguistic skill to do it, um, it can lead to a very successful essay. However, it does take a little bit more complexity to write that type of essay because the language you need uh, to say, well, I partially agree because of this, but I also partially disagree because of this. So in conclusion, I kind of believe this and this. It's a bit more difficult to write this way. So many teachers, um, including myself, recommend simply choosing one side uh, to agree with because it's easier to write, okay? Even if it's not your um, true opinion, it, it's sometimes better, it's sometimes easier just to say, right, I actually agree with this um, and argue for one side uh, because it's simple. So what I've done here is I'm choosing to disagree with the statement um, for these two reasons. And that's going to be my overall response. Overall, I disagree, right? However, you can still use these, the, the opposing view in your essay. You can refer to it uh, when you make a concession, uh, when you present an opposing view and then counter it. And we're going to look at how you can do that in a moment. But that, that allows you to keep a simple structure, I disagree, while in your body paragraphs, you can still mention the opposing view. And that will show you've considered both sides and it will lead to a more complex and interesting essay. Um, so we'll look at how to do that in a moment. Um, but in this, in this lesson, we're going to focus on how to choose one main uh, uh, one side 
to totally agree or totally disagree. Okay. Uh, Leo, you've said how many ideas should we write? Uh, typically, you'll have one main idea per body paragraph. Okay. And usually we'll have two body paragraphs. So you'll have two main ideas with reasons and examples in, in your essay. We'll look at how to structure that just now. Um, so here's a structure you can use for pretty much any agree or disagree essay. We've, um, uh, no, Theo, you won't be penalized for picking one side. As long as you develop your ideas and you give a logical argument, you'll be fine. You don't have to consider both sides, okay? Um, so in the introduction, very good, Mohammed. You're, you're ahead of the game. The first thing we need to do is to introduce the topic uh, by rewriting the question. And we do this, it's called paraphrasing. Rewrite the question in your own words. Yep, Ronak, we'll look at it uh, in a moment. Uh, so one or two sentence paraphrase. Secondly, we need to explain our opinion and our main points. This is our overall response. And you're right again. Uh, yep, uh, Artyom, many, many of you have got it. Well done. It's a thesis statement. Uh, again, this is your main point and your opinion and a summary of your main points. Okay, so that's our introduction. We'll use the same structure for are two body paragraphs, body paragraph A and body paragraph B. First of all, we need the first sentence of each paragraph is going to be, we call this the excellent, the topic sentence. Uh, this introduces the main idea of the paragraph. In this case, it's going to be, I disagree because first main idea. And then for body paragraph B, I disagree because of second main idea. Um, yes, absolutely, uh, test user. Uh, the passive voice is acceptable in IELTS and you should, uh, if you can use it successfully, that's great. It shows grammatical range, grammatical complexity. Um, it's a great idea. And we're actually gonna look at how you can use the passive uh, in a moment. <clears throat> So, uh, Naman, I would aim for about 75 words for each of your body paragraphs, 50 words for your introduction, 50 words for your conclusion. Uh, that will take you to about 250. Don't worry, Hadi, we're going to look at paraphrasing in a moment. Um, second part of your body paragraph, you will need to explain your topic sentence. So give some reasons, give a justification, elaborate exactly, okay? The third part, we want to give something to support. Uh, exactly, Mohammed. we're gonna give an example to support uh, our main point. And finally, this is a kind of optional final step, but it can be very nice to, um, to show awareness of the other point of view. And this is where you make a concession and you then, excellent, yep, counter that concession. So <clears throat> for example, we might say, um, while it is true, or although it is true um, that one person only produces a small amount of pollution. Nonetheless, it is everybody's moral obligation to protect the environment, okay? So you're showing the opposite view, but you're then countering it with your own point. And this shows that you've thought about both sides, you've looked at both sides of the argument, and you've still decided your own logical conclusion. We'll look at how the language you can use for that in a moment. Um, finally, we're gonna have a conclusion. And your conclusion should begin with 
uh, a summarization, excellent, of your main points and also give your opinion as well. <clears throat> um, so restate or summarize your main point. Um, Attila, counter, um, counter means uh, give the opposite view and then give your view. So say something that contrasts with the opposite view. So um, we'll look at an example in a moment, okay? It should become clear, don't worry. Um, so um, yes, contradicts, exactly. Uh, finally, after we've summarized our main point and opinion, we can give a final, uh, perhaps a final opinion, a final conclusion, a comment, very good, uh, MD Rahman, um, a final comment on the topic, right? This is a bit tricky because you don't want to bring in new information here. You don't want to add new points, but you can give a final recommendation, a final thought, maybe a suggestion for the future in very general terms. And yeah, Theo, you're right. The, um, the conclusion is in many ways um, the same as the introduction, uh, especially the thesis statement. We will, the thesis statement, you give your opinion and main points. In the body, you explain them in more detail. And then at the end, you come back and you say, okay, so these are my main points. This is what I believe based on what I've just told you. So um, yeah, you need to paraphrase your thesis statement essentially in the conclusion. <clears throat> right, uh, excuse me, you guys. <clears throat> okay. Um, and no, Mohammed, the final comment's not essential, but it can be a nice way to round up your essay, okay? We'll look at examples of this just now. So guys, let's take a look at the introduction. Um, yes, Satmed, the conclusion is, the, is basically a summary of your main points, exactly. So we've got our question. Uh, we need to paraphrase the question, first of all. We're going to paraphrase the question using four different techniques. Uh, the first technique you can use is voice. So this involves using the active or passive voice. Um, so instead of saying... Um, instead of saying, you know, some people believe that individuals can do nothing, or some people think that individuals can do nothing, we can use a passive form. <clears throat> this way, um, I've said, it is believed that. Okay, this is much more academic. Very good, Alexis. Widely believed, often believed, commonly believed, these are all good adverbs to use for these opinion statements. So here I've said it is widely believed that, okay, to introduce uh, a general opinion uh, and introduce the topic. Another verb we could use, it is often, very good, Ronak, argued, yep, uh, excellent. Uh, here I've said suggested. And you've guessed it already, it is commonly uh, argued that, okay? So, very good. So Attila, that's the nice introduction. You could try using the passive voice. Instead of some people say, you could say it is often believed that, uh, just to make it a bit more academic. So, we're gonna choose uh, this, uh, sentence to begin with, it is widely believed that. Now we've got this word improve <clears throat> and we can find a synonym for this word. We've said improve the environment. Very good, Mohammed. We said protect and this is a collocation with environment. We often say protecting, 
protecting uh, the environment. Is and we've got this expression can do nothing, can do nothing. Can we think of another way of saying can do nothing? Perhaps you know, not possible, very good, um, impossible, excellent. Here I've used a, quite a nice expression is beyond the power of, sorry guys, my screen's freezing up a little bit, but hopefully that will go. I might try to change my video settings. So yeah, there we go. So is be uh, completely incapable. Very good. Uh, one second, guys, I'm going to change my settings. So hopefully this will speed up the, my screen a little bit. Okay, excellent. So we've got individuals. Now, um, here, we can, instead of changing individuals, we could, uh, so we've got some nice expressions, citizens, general public, people. We can also change the word form. So individuals here is a noun it's possible to change it to an adjective. We could say individual citizens, very good common people. These are, these are very good expressions here, guys. Um, is beyond the power of individual citizens and that we've got governments and large companies. Now, can we think of any synonyms for these words? And organizations, cabinets, and corporations, very good. Okay. Now, government here, it's difficult to find uh, an exact synonym for government. So I would keep government the same. Large companies we can change. And we can also change the word order as well. So instead of saying governments and large companies, we can say corporations and governments, right? Um, so it's quite important that, you know, you don't try to change every word um, because some words don't have exact synonyms, right? Like a government, it's kind of, you know, uh, it's difficult to find a, an exact synonym for that. So. Um, I would keep governments the same, but we can still paraphrase by changing the word order here, governments, uh, corporations, and governments. Okay. Um, so it is widely believed that protecting the environment is beyond the power of individual citizens and that corporations and governments are uh, very good solely here. I've said alone. Uh, and we've got this expression uh, can make a difference. So, sorry guys, my, my screen is freezing up, so I'm not able to, to click through. There we go. Are able to make a difference. Bring change, excellent, Amritha. Um, Ola Dapo, authorities is pretty good, but it doesn't mean exactly the same as a government. The government is for a country. Authority could be for a town or, you know, a, a company even. So um, very good, are able to protect it. Very good, Ashuvan. yep. Um, here I've said take effective action on this issue, okay? So another nice way to say, make a difference, take effective action. Okay, we've paraphrased the question. We now need our thesis statement, uh, introducing our opinion and our main points. So here's our main points. I disagree because we can use these expressions to introduce our opinion. 
I strongly disagree with this point of view as I believe that, right? This makes your opinion very clear and introduces your reasons. And I'm going to say, I strongly disagree with this point of view as I believe that individual actions together can contribute to positive environmental change. Uh, that's right, but we're going to give some uh, supporting examples, uh, test user. We, this is just a statement of a general uh, response. Later on, we'll give some support. Yep. And we've also got our second point. While uh, we can say, um, it is a bit like debating, uh, Attila, exactly. While persuading governments and companies to protect the natural world. So, so here we've got my, uh, our opinion and our two main points joined by the linking expression while. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, can we use believe twice? It's, it's okay. Um, it, perhaps you're right. It would be even better if we uh, used another word, maybe suggested, argued. Um, yeah, Shahila, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, you won't be penalized for this though. It, it's just, it's a, you're, the vocabulary you use over the whole essay is assessed, not repeating one or two individual words, okay? Right. Okay, guys, so that is our introduction. We can move on now to the body paragraphs. Let's take a quick look. Uh, we're, as I said, we're going to have our topic sentence introducing our main point. Uh, first point, so I can say first of all. And um, yes, Allah, you'll be able to watch uh, this lesson on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days. Okay. Um, our world, Ronak, would be, would be fine. So we can say, first of all, individuals can create positive environmental change. And uh, let's see, how can they do this? By working together as a, what would be a good word to go here, to say many people acting together Um, firstly, would be all right. Very good. One team, uh, one. I, here I've chosen community. Yep, exactly. I um, think community works very well here when you're talking about environmental problems. Okay. Um, now, we've said this, but we need to explain it, right? We need to give a reason. Uh, so we can use a linking expression like this is because, right? to explain our main point. This is because the effects of many small actions quickly add up. Okay, um, so I've explained it. Now I can give an example. I'll use um, run up here is not quite right. Uh, add up uh, would be better. Um, for example, if each person in a large city to walk or take the bus instead of driving for one day a week. Um, what do you think the missing word here is? If each person in a large city perhaps decided or decides, yep. Think about the verb form though. Uh, yeah, here I've said chose. Um, Theo, a uh, snowball here would uh, quickly snowball would probably be okay because it's appropriate and it's not uh, so informal. I think that would be a nice idiomatic expression to use here. Yeah, quickly snowball. Um, if each 
person in a large city chose to walk or take the bus instead of driving one day a week, the reduction in air pollution be huge. Oh, top marks for Rosita and Mohammed. Very good. And Powell, well done. Um, would be would be huge excellent and bezad very good question why chose um can anyone explain in the comments this is a type of second conditional um sentence so here we're using the past tense in the clause with if if past simple and then in the second part we're using would instead of will and the reason for this is because it's a hypothetical situation. It's an imaginary situation. We're imagining if people did this, right? I don't think they will all decide to do this, but if they did, this would be the result, the imaginary result. Okay, so this is a, a very useful um, pattern to practice using, especially for examples, you're giving hypothetical examples. Um, could would also work there as well, Manjod. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, can mm, is not so good, Gressling, because that's more about the, the future rather than, um, or an immediate possibility rather than an imaginary possibility, okay? Um, so we've got the uh, conditional sentence. We can wrap up with, as I mentioned before, the opposing view, making a concession and countering that concession. So here we will introduce our opposite point of view. And this is a nice way to, to say this, while it is true that, okay, I'm introducing the opposite point of view, while it is true that one person acting alone cannot make much difference, many individuals taking the same action can have a dramatic positive effect. Okay, so um, here we have the opposite point of view and I'm countering it. I'm saying, while it's true, yes, many people cannot make a difference. Uh, one person cannot make a difference. Counter many people taking the same action can make a difference. Okay, Carolina, you said, should this be in a new paragraph? Um, no. Um, and not in this structure. In this structure, we're going to use the counter as a way to wrap up, to summarize the first main point, okay? Um, if you were discussing both views, then you might put the opposite point of view in a second paragraph and you discuss it in more detail. But because we're just discussing one side, we're arguing for one side, I disagree, we're going to put, uh, we're going to have two points with the same point of view. So this is just one short sentence to counter the, uh, the main uh, point that we're making. Um, yeah, uh, as I said, when it's, it's nice, it's a nice thing to do. It's not essential, but it can help you to get a higher score. Okay. Um, but it's not essential. Um, in the same way that the other parts of the essay are. Exactly, Alexis, it will improve your grammatical range and it can also um, improve your task response because it's showing you're considering both sides of the argument. Okay, guys, we're going to need to move on so we can cover the whole essay. Hopefully, the uh, next paragraph will give you another example as well. We've got your linking expressions here for reasons, for examples, for counter. We've also got some useful grammar as well, uh, which I'm hoping I can show you <laughs> if you give me a second. Uh, 
what's happening here. And yep. Oh, and I think we're back. Maybe there we go. Okay. So yeah, we've got the verb forms here in blue, um, which is uh, uh, you can notice there's a lot of modal verbs with can. Can create, cannot make, can have, talking about possible effects. And then there's the second conditional talking about um, the imaginary or hypothetical effect. Uh, with practice, Moen, with, with practice, you'll, it will help you, okay? Um, we've also got some nice vocabulary here. Positive environmental change, quickly add up, a dramatic positive effect, okay? This is some nice uh, language here. Okay, guys, let's move on to body paragraph two. We're going to talk about our second main point. We're going to use our topic sentence to introduce. Because we're using the same, uh, we're arguing the same side, we're disagree and disagree, we can use a connector like furthermore, because we're adding another similar point we can introduce our second main point, which is the actions of individuals can also influence governments and corporations, okay? That's my second uh, main point to disagree. We can then explain this and we can use a linking expression such as due to the fact that, right? Or this is because uh, the reason for this is, right? Any linker which gives a reason. Um, on the other hand, introduces an opposite point of view, Leo. Um, so it's not quite right, but moreover would be fine, Deepish and uh, Infinix. Moreover is uh, correct. Okay, it's an addition. So due to the fact that people have something as both citizens and consumers. Yep, Pachu, owing to the fact would be fine. Good responsibilities, rights, very good. These are all correct. Um, here I've chosen to use the word power. Okay, people have power as both citizens and consumers. Can we give an example of this power now? We can say, for instance, to introduce, uh, it depends on the linking word and sometimes yes, uh, sometimes no, okay? Uh, so uh, for instance, here I've said, they, the people can organize social media something social media voting, perhaps, um, choose to buy eco-friendly products, excellent. Yep, you could mention Greta Thunberg, exactly. She's an individual with um, very, uh, yeah, like a, with a lot of influence, right? So that would be, she would be an excellent example, actually, to mention Greta Thunberg uh, in this essay. Um, yeah, perfect example there. Um, we might, I might update the, the, this lesson to include her, actually. It's a good idea. So uh, they can organize, here I've said social media campaigns. Exactly, Jirish. Social media campaigns, nice collocation. Um, or, and I think one of you mentioned this before, boycott certain products. Uh, boycott does anyone know what this means? It's a nice expression. It's when you stop buying a company's product to protest against the company's policy. So I don't like what Nestle is doing, so I won't buy their products. I stop buying their products, exactly. Um, just means to stop buying a product, okay? Um, 
which are bad for the environment. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pavel. <laughs> Very good. So uh, let's see. Um, we've got our example. We can finally give a counter and a concession and a counter. Yeah. Yeah, promote would be fine as well, Theo. Now, while there is no question that governments and large companies must play a something in protecting the natural world, harmful would be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ronak, you don't need to always use a counter. And in fact, you don't need to use it at all. However, it will help to improve your score if you can use it appropriately, uh, which is why we're looking at this technique now. So very good, Mohammed and Fam must play a role in protecting the natural world. Okay, so here I'm giving the opposite view, right? I'm saying, yes, yes, we know. Governments must uh, protect the natural world, right? It's true, of course. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not blind. However, and this is the counter, it is clear that individuals and communities can put pressure on these something to act. Corporates, agency, organizations, very good, Carolina, exactly, um, on these organizations to act. So this is just a nice way to summarize your main point and to show awareness of the other point of view as well by making a concession using while or although and then countering that concession by giving your own point of view okay so i hope that's a bit more clear for you all right we will uh, look now at the conclusion and then hope we'll get through that quite quickly so we'll have a bit of time at the end for some of your questions okay so let's uh we've got these linking expressions here and yes, Nida, uh, the sentences are very long, and that is um, a good sign in IELTS. Uh, they have two parts. Uh, they're complex sentences that will increase your score for grammatical range so, uh, and complexity. So useful to use these linking words, okay? For tenses, Actually, what tenses do we have here? Again, we're using the modal verb, can, can influence, can organize, can put pressure on, okay? This is um, uh, essentially present tense, but with a modal verb uh, to show the possibility. This is, uh, this is what they can do, right? And very common to use this when you're talking about uh, possible actions in, in the present, right? Um, finally, we've got some, uh, yeah, you could just use the present simple, Alexis. It's just that the, the can gives it a bit more complexity. It's a bit more uh, advanced language. It sounds a bit more academic. If you just say actions of influence, individuals influence governments, uh, people organize social media campaigns, it's correct, but it's um, not quite as academic sounding. And yeah, could here would be all right, Ronak as well, um, except not not should because you're talking about what they do now right you're talking about what they they are actually doing now not what they should do in the future so uh finally we've got some useful vocabulary as well citizens and consumers social media campaigns boycott certain products bad for the environment okay uh, play a role. So uh, let's see. Let's take a quick look at the conclusion. 
as we said, we need to restate our main point and opinion, and we'll summarize the, the main points. So you shouldn't introduce any new ideas here, okay? Don't go off into new details or new arguments. That should all come in your body paragraph. Here, we're just interested in summarizing our point of view uh, concisely. So we can start with in conclusion, people can protect the environment by their individual actions. So I've paraphrased my main idea again, right? This is the main idea of my essay. If people work together, uh, they can, uh, yeah, exactly. In a nutshell is too colloquial, is too informal. In conclusion, much better, right? And yes, Satilla, the conclusion is the summary of your essay, okay? Um, and my second point is that when people coordinate their actions, this will have a positive effect on governments and corporations, right? That's my thesis. Uh, people need to work together and uh, influence their governments and companies. Okay, that's fine, simple enough. We can then give you know, a final comment on the topic. What do you think would be a, a good recommendation. Um, Infinix to sum up is okay. It's also a little bit informal. I would just, to be honest, I would stick with in conclusion or to conclude. Um, very good, Alexis. I would recommend, yep. Um, overall, FAM as well is a nice general way. Um, what, what do we want to suggest, you know, about this, this topic? Uh, about protecting the environment. What, what do we really believe, you know, overall, what needs to happen? Yeah, people and government need to work together, Mohammed. Yeah, that's, that's one point of view. Uh, you know, here I'm thinking working together is paramount. That's, that's a great ending, Alexis. Yep, um, in my opinion, everyone has a responsibility to care for the environment. Okay, it's like my final comment on this subject. It's not individuals, it's not government, it's not companies. Everybody should be working together to protect the environment. And that's just a nice way to, to close without adding new information. Yeah, exactly, Joe Yang. Um, yeah, perfect. Okay, so guys, that is the essay today for Agree and Disagree. Um, I've put the full essay up here. It comes to 256 words. It's a band nine essay. Um, if you are taking this in uh, your test, a few things that are to bear in mind, you know, don't start writing straight away stop, read the question, take time to understand the question, make a plan, think of reasons, think of your main points, think of reasons, think of examples, think of a counter if you want to include a counterpoint, but make a plan before you start writing. Okay? Um, also, you shouldn't waste time in the test counting your words. You can um say that you can use the official IELTS answer paper, write practice tasks, count how many lines it takes you to write 250 words. And then in the test, you'll know, okay, I need to write 12 lines, I need to write 15 lines like this. Um, for brainstorming and planning to win, maybe six minutes, I think is, is worthwhile. Uh, to at least six minutes or so at the beginning to read the question and to make a clear plan. Um, the more time you spend planning, that can help you to write faster and stop you wasting time. Yeah, 
uh, that also sounds good, Naman. I mean, there's not an exact answer, but uh, good. Um, okay, guys. Uh, as I've said, practice with the official IELTS answer paper. Spend some time at the end checking your grammar and spelling. Focus on you know the S, is, are, um, third person S, plural S, the. If these are mistakes you frequently make, look out for them. Uh, that can that can help you. Okay. Um, and practice with a range of different question types and topics. We have a lot available on our website, IELTSOnlineTest.com. So guys, that uh, brings us to the end of uh, the lesson here. Um, I can see that a lot of you have uh, questions already and you have some in the Q&A. Uh, so I think we can spend a few minutes taking a look at them just now. But Thank you very much uh, for, for joining the webinar. I'm, I'm glad, uh, well, I hope it was helpful for you. And uh, yeah, I hope you found it useful. So yeah, exactly. Work together and we'll be happy is a, a good way to conclude. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Alexis. That's great. Um, so guys, I would just like to do um, a bit of promotion before we go into your questions for our speaking and writing evaluation service. Um, you can see the link there uh, on the slide. Uh, we offer a writing evaluation service via our website where we have a team of qualified IELTS examiners um, who have trained as speaking and writing examiners like me. Uh, we can look at your writing and we can give you very detailed feedback on your estimated score and what you can do to improve your score. So if you are planning to take the test, um, this can be a really useful way to understand where your strengths and weaknesses are and what you need to focus on to get the score you need. So um, we offer that for writing. We also offer a speaking evaluation service as well. Uh, the links are there uh, to our website. Please uh, check them out. So, yeah. Uh, so guys, I think we can spend uh, a few minutes taking a look at your questions. I'm afraid we're not going to get through all of them, but I will try to answer as many as I can just now. Um, we've got a first question here from Jay, uh, J09106A, which is, uh, in the what extent do you agree or disagree essay, can we write two paragraphs supporting the ideas or one paragraph supporting and one paragraph disagreeing? Um, yes, Jay, as I said at the beginning, it's fine um, to say I partially agree um, and partially disagree. So you can say I agree because this, however, I disagree because of this. This is a uh, it's fine to do it. It's just a bit more difficult to structure your essay. The language you need is a bit more complex. So before you try to do that, make sure that you know what you're doing and the type of language that you can use uh, to do that. We can try to look at that in a future lesson. Okay. Um, for now, we've just focused on one side because it's easier and we generally recommend students just focus on one side um, because you can still get a very high mark. Uh, you won't lose any marks for just totally agreeing or totally disagreeing. Um, it's just easy, a bit easier to do as well. Um, sure, Mohammed, I'll skip back to the previous slide. Okay, uh, one sec. Hopefully that should be there. Yep. I saw... Um, Sorry, you, you've gone now in the chat, but you've got your test on the 7th. Uh, best of luck to you. I hope your test goes well. Um, and yeah, we have some more webinars in the next week or so. Uh, perhaps you can join us uh, for one of them in time. Let's see. Right. Um, when if you want to write this topic, uh, we don't have time, I'm afraid, to check every student's topic, but we do have the writing evaluation service, so that might be something you could consider. We'll be able to give it our full attention, okay? Ah, Anonymous, you're saying, thank you, guys. I took the test on the 7th of uh, 
November and you got a 7.5. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you, Anonymous. Congratulations. Uh, I'm, I hope the webinar has helped you with that. So best of luck with your studies. Uh, so let's see. Uh, thank you, Said, for the feedback. Um, Stephen Wynn, does citizens just refer to people from the cities? Um, a citizen can be from a country as well, uh, Stephen. So you could say the citizens of um, you know, the USA, the citizens of Germany, uh, they might live in the countryside, but not a city. It tend to be citizens of a, of a country. Okay. Um, Attila, you're asking how many examples, concessions, and counters are necessary for a good score. Um, Attila, generally, if you have one, so you have two main points for your essay, one main point for each paragraph, and then for each main point, you have a reason and an example. That is enough to develop your argument. Okay, this is why we suggest giving examples, giving reasons, and also giving concessions and counters, because this is one of the criteria is that you should develop your ideas. If you just say, you know, well, I believe this because this, for example, for example, for example, you're not really developing each of those ideas. You're just writing a list. Whereas if you can show that you're taking your main idea, you're given a reason to support that main idea, you're giving an example to support that reason, and then you're giving another point of view that's connected to your, your main idea, that is, um, that's really good idea development. And that's, you know, that will, if you can do that well, you're, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a high score for task response. So that's why we, we introduce this, this structure. Um, let's see. Um, Ruth, I'm not sure about the scope for writing discounts. You could write in to the website and ask by all means, uh, one of our team can, can discuss that with you. Okay. Um, mention you came to the webinar and, uh, who knows, they might be able to help you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anonymous, you're saying it's stressful to write the essay. Uh, what can I do? Yeah. You know, anonymous, the exams are stressful. Uh, everyone gets nervous in the exam. The best thing to do is to be prepared to be, to have done the practice, to have tried a range of different question types to be ready so that you can recognize the question type and you have a structure that you've practiced using, um, that can help you to, uh, you know, to feel prepared and to feel less nervous. Also, um, you know, try when you're in the test after the reading section, just take, just stop <laughs> for a moment, take a very deep breath, breathe a few times, stretch out your body and try to slow down so that you're ready to focus. Because when you're reading, it's very, you have to go very, very fast. Uh, in the writing section, it's time to slow down a bit and, and start thinking more carefully. Okay. So those would be my, my tips for you. Um, yes, guys, we will put uh, these videos on YouTube. Uh, so you'll be able to watch that uh, in the next couple of days. And Ahmed, we do offer mock speaking exam sessions. Uh, that is for the 30 minute session. It depends on how many you buy, which package you buy. Um, you can take a look on our website uh, on IELTSonlinetest.com and you'll get all the details on there. Okay. Right. Guys, I'm afraid we have run over a bit today, so I'm going to have to wrap up uh, for, for now. Uh, so I just want to say a very big thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, it has been uh, a lot of fun presenting. Uh, I don't usually present because, uh, yeah, but today I had the opportunity. So thank you for, for bearing with me. 
And uh, if you do have additional questions we didn't cover today, you can post them as comments on the YouTube channel. We do check them. I will do my best to answer the questions on there. Okay, so um, post, uh, post your questions as comments on YouTube. If you can give us a like, uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing. It, it helps us out a lot. And yeah, we have more webinars coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I hope you can join us for another lesson soon. All right. So thank you guys. Yep. Have a good evening and uh, hope to see you guys soon. And best of luck if you're taking your test in the near future. Okay. Cheers, guys. <laughs> oh, that's lovely feedback. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, <laughs> lovely to hear. Thank you so much. Um, yep. Great. Cheers, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.